Greetings everyone, so today I want to talk about clock speed and CPU cores. I did a previous video where Apple was talking about the different cores that they put in their processor and I did a comparison video on the different Mac Pros that Apple offer and how many cores are in those system to make the system run a little bit faster. So I'm going to break down the difference between the clock speed and the cores, mainly the cores in this video. Okay, so let's start off with the explanation of a CPU. The CPU is a central processing unit, and the main two units of a CPU is the clock speed and the number of cores. And both of these are important in terms of performance. And it also varies based on the task that the CPU has to perform. Now the CPU is basically interpreting programming code, and it's usually dealing with ones and zeros and turn that into information or a user interface that the user can interact with. Whether it be a video game or an application like Word or Excel, those are in actual computer codes that somebody programmed. The computer is taking those program codes, which is usually ones and zeros to the computer, and translate it into something that the user of that computer can actually work with. Now, depend on the computer program or application, you can have hundreds of code or you can have millions of codes or more. So the computer has to interpret all that information and give it to you as fast as it can. With some application or programs, they take advantage of the computer clock speed, while other software might take advantage of the computer cores. So the processing cores and the clock speed work together to try to deliver the information to you as fast as possible. With those two working together, it's called the processing speed. So now let's talk about the processing cores. The processing cores are individual processing unit within a computer central unit, which is the CPU. The processor core receives instruction from a single computer task and working with the clock speed to quickly process the information and temporarily store it in random access memory, which is the RAM. And if there's any permanent information that needs to be saved, it's going to save it to the hard drive or your SSD drive, depending on which one your computer has. Most computers have four cores, maybe eight or even more. And with a higher end computers, you can have up to 28 cores like the Mac Pro. And of course, with more cores in that system, you're going to spend more money because that's a bigger chip that can handle all those processing cores. And with more cores, you can run more application at once without slowing down the system because a computer can handle all those different tasks by assigning them to different cores within the central unit. Now you're gonna need more than just cores to run multiple apps at one time. If your system has low RAM, then even with multiple cores, you're still gonna have a slower system even though it's divided among the cores. The computer stores some of that information that it has in the CPU core into RAM so it can access the information much faster and transfer it to the user so they can take advantage of the information that they need. And with the generation now, there's not one program running at one time. Most of us are doing multiple things on our computer. Same thing with a tablet and our phones. So we need processors with multiple cores to keep up with our digital life. Now, not all applications or programs take advantage of a multi-core CPU. That task is left up to the developer, the ones who develop in the software to really take advantage of those multiple cores. So the programmer has to design the software to support multi-threading, which is something I can get into later. And in so doing that, will boost the performance of the application. Now, as far as the clock speed, now computer clock speed is measured in gigahertz. So you might see 2.3 gigahertz or 4.0 gigahertz, but that's determined by the type of processor that you purchase. One thing I've noticed is when you have multiple cores, it depends on how many number cores you have determine how much speed you get. So I've seen processors with lower core counts and higher speed. And on the other hand, I've seen processors with more cores, but a lower clock speed. So a four core processor might have three point something gigahertz, while the eight core processor might have two point something gigahertz. But even though the clock speed might be lower on the higher core processor, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be slower than the processor that has less core. Because the processor with the lower clock speed and more cores is still gonna get more done than the processor with the four cores and a higher clock speed. 
the more cores, the more it's going to divide those application into those cores to get the job done faster. But the clock speed is just as important as the CPU cores. When I look at Apple's computers, I notice they just emphasize on the cores and they don't advertise the clock speed of the M1 processors. On the Intel or even the AMD side, you're going to get the clock speed. And that's important to some users, but Apple is not emphasizing that because I guess clock speed is not that important in specs. Now, most high performance gamers are more interested in clock speed and probably a little bit about core because that's very important to them too. Now there's graphic cards with a GPU that's similar to a CPU and it also has a core, but the core on the graphic card is much higher. These are the numbers of a graphic card core that you're looking at right now. It needs those higher core numbers so it can deliver the information to you without seeing any slowdown on your screen. Now, one more thing about the clock speed, the higher the clock speed, that means it's going to generate more heat in the CPU. So most people have a CPU that has higher clock speed. Sometimes what they do is called overclocking it. So they make the CPU run faster than it normally runs which is like revving your engine real high and have the RMP in the red at a long period of time. Eventually that's going to overheat the engine. So in order to keep the CPU cool, most people that runs the CPU at a higher rate usually have some type of special cooling system built inside the unit so they can keep it cool and not overheat. Now, normal users don't worry about clock speed and CPU cores because they just want a computer to get whatever they need to get done. Most of that core and speed stuff is for high end people, people who were doing like video editing, playing video games, or even running a business that requires CPU to be at more high performance rate, which include faster clock rate and CPU cores. So the standard users can get away with a computer with only four cores eight the max that will take care of your basic tasks. And if you're really not doing anything heavy lifting, I'm talking about surfing the web, checking email and stuff like that. If it's still available out there, you can get away with a dual core processor. Now, a lot of CPU have what they call turbo mode where they go into a faster clock rate. They might run normally at say, for instance, 2.5, but they can turbocharge themselves into four gigahertz if need be, but they don't stay at that high speed at all time. It can kick into turbo mode and then when it's finished, it goes back into normal mode. Okay, so that's it on the CPU cores and the clock speed. Like I say, you don't really have to worry too much about it if you're just a standard user. Most people on the higher end automatically know what they want and they know what to look for in the specs when they're looking for a computer with more cores or faster clock speed, but your standard users are not worried about that stuff. They just want a computer to work as fast as they can work. Now, most systems, including with the operating system knows how to balance the load. It knows when to kick in the turbo mode and when to make the task of each application go to whatever particular course to still get it done. So you can multitask in most modern computers today. I've seen people that has maybe 15 application running at one time, or maybe 10 instance of one application, like three different spreadsheet open at the same time, maybe five word documents at the same time, and even 10 browser tabs open at the same time. And as long as the computer has the computing power, which include the clock speed, the CPU cores and the RAM, to handle it, then you have nothing to worry about. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was helpful in some way or another. If it was, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comment, leave it down below. Until I see you next time, have a good one.